Now that we have a brief understanding of what exactly is object-oriented programming and how it works, let's now look at all the different concepts which are present in object-oriented programming and it forms the backbone of any OOPS language, right? So the first concept uh, in the object-oriented programming is encapsulation. Now, as the name suggests, uh, in layman terms, it's the process of wrapping up data under a single unit. And in programming languages, that single unit could be a class, right? So in, um, in, in the real world, if I can tell you an example of encapsulation and also uh, the name quite suggests uh, the reference to that particular uh, example, right? So whenever you have any health issues, you do take uh, capsules, right? Now these capsules, if you have noticed, uh, it it consists of different compositions of medicines, right? So, uh, ten percent of composition could be some some medicine, and the other fifty percent could be another medicine, right? So, there is different compositions of medicines which are brought together into a single capsule, right? Which is uh, given to the patient. So, the same logic also applies here, right? So, what happens is um, the class it helps us to encapsulate all the fields, right? Which hold the state of the object as well as the methods which then define the actions on this object, right? So all the fields and the methods are encapsulated into a single unit, which is our class, okay? Now, apart from encapsulating um, all the different data and fields and methods, it also provides you a way of protecting your data. Right. So how it does it, uh, it gives you the ability to hide all your data, uh, all your methods right inside your class so that no other class could actually access this fields and methods. Right. Uh, it provides a protective shield, you can say, uh, which prevents the data from being accessed by the code outside this shield, which is nothing but a class. Right. So so the outside classes cannot access uh, the data inside a particular class if it is uh, having the right kind of access modifier, right? Now in Java, there are different access modifiers, but uh, if you want to protect your data, then you need to use the private access modifier. So you can declare all the variables in your class as private, and then uh, no other class can access these variables outside this particular class. Right. If you want to change um, any value of the variable, you can have uh, getters and setters methods inside the class. Right. Now, uh, let's see this in action. Right. How how this looks like inside a real class. How the encapsulation works. Okay. With an example. So let's go back to a project. Um, I was showing you this class um, and the op and its object in my previous session where I was explaining about object-oriented programming. Now, this could be also used uh, to explain encapsulation. I would explain how it is possible, but this is the class which contains all the different methods and variables, right? And also the setter methods, right? And then uh, this is the object of the car class, right? Which is again calling the different methods to kind of impl implement some functionality, okay? So in the car class, if you notice, all the different attributes or variables have been defined as private, right? So when these are defined as private, no other class uh, would be able to access these variables. If you they want to change something or they want to set any particular color, uh, right? They can access these public methods, right? Or the setter methods. So um, to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's create another class and let's call this Tata. So this is another um, example of a car company, right? Now, what I will try here is try to access those variables and try to change or assign some value to them, right? So let's try and do that. 
this is our public static void main and inside this what we'll do is we will um, we will create a object of our class right so what we'll do is we are going to create an object of our car class okay so this is the object and then using this object i'm i will try to access the particular variable now let's have a look at what are the different variables here so we have a string variable called color right and size int so let's try to assign some value to this particular variable right so what we'll do is we'll use um, we will declare another variable here called design something and then we will use the object to kind of um, get the color right so now as i write this code here right i'm trying to access the variable which is declared as private in the um, car class right and if you see uh, java is able to identify that right so it is showing you an error and it is showing you that color has private access in this particular class so you cannot use this particular variable in outside that particular class so the either you need to declare it public or you need to use your getters and setters methods right so uh, this is an example of how that data hiding or um, encapsulation works inside object oriented programming right where you can uh, restrict access to particular uh, dif different uh, variables and their methods inside a particular class right and you encapsulate everything inside a particular class right so the attributes the methods right and then the getters and setters so everything can be encapsulated into a single unit which is class right so this is one of the major concepts uh, which is present in object oriented programming so it's very important to understand before moving on to the other concepts right so please go ahead and uh, have a look at what i have explained in this particular section and then in the next section we are going to talk about uh, inheritance